Good morning. It is a beautiful day here in sunny Florida. And I wanted to show you guys the garden because we've been working on this the last like few weeks. Um, it's probably the main reason that I haven't been on YouTube. Um, there's been other things too. I did film something, I deleted everything somehow. And then I had some camera issues prior to that where the GoPro wasn't charging um, for some reason. Anyways, it's been one thing after the next, and then this week was our anniversary week, mine and John's, so um, we did take the weekend and we went to Disney Springs, which was so fun, and um, we ended up at Ikea, which is something else I'll have to show you. Um, but yeah, this is the garden that we've been working on. I think I've mentioned it in maybe a past video. Um, we do live near an airport, so sorry about that. Um, and yeah, so I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to show you guys kind of what we've been up to. And this will be kind of like a little garden update. Okay, so this is kind of what we're working with. Um, John had put these boxes in years and years ago. And they had just kind of been sitting left unmanaged, just kind of out here. We would, you know, dump extra soil, um from like the other part of the yard where we have our orchard and things like that. Um, hello, Shadow. <laughs> and so anyway, there was a lot of tilling that needed to be done and there was just a lot of prep work that John did. And um, while he was kind of prepping the boxes, I was mixing fresh soil and laying ground tarp. Um, this will also be covered in ground tarp. Um, I really just want everything to look kind of clean and to be able to walk out here and see exactly uh, what I'm about to step on because if you know Florida, you know creatures come from everywhere. So um, yeah, I just, I, outdoor gardening is new for me. It's not something that I'm pretty familiar with at all. And so this is really a trial run for us and just kind of seeing how things play out this season and you know what kind of yields we can get out of this this area um so this is just this cute little cart that i have kind of set up um just with some stuff in it there's cocoa core in the bin which i have found to be very very helpful when it comes to starting seeds and maintaining moisture it kind of enables me to not have to water like two times a day. Um, I think you'll see what I mean when we get going. And then I, I just have like a scrap trash bag here. Um, and that's pretty much it. And then John put this cute little gate together. And um, I don't really use it, honestly. I just kind of step over, but it is nice to have that option. Um, yeah, and so he put this little fence up, which if you are anywhere where you can have access to Ross, um, we actually found this, a, a lot of this fencing at Ross, um, and believe it or not, so this part of the fence, here's, here's where it meets. Um, I don't know if you can see that difference, but this part of the fence is actually from Ross and this is the Lowe's because this wasn't going to be enough. I paid $14.99 and it was all of that which I think is a pretty decent amount for $14.99. It was a really good deal. Um, and then we realized we were gonna need more, so we ended up buying some from Lowe's. It is considerably more expensive at Lowe's, and I feel like the quality is just not like as good. So anyways, that's just, if you're near a Ross and you can, they have amazing garden stuff. Anyways, I digress. So, um, basically I laid the ground tarp. I, I did that, I didn't really know what I was doing, but I just kind of, we had some scrap ground tarp um, and I just basically cut it and um, stapled it in. I like the option of being able to have the blower out here and um, just kind of blow all the sand and stuff away. It's also nice when you're weeding or planting to have something other than dirt or grass to kneel in. And so yeah. This is just kind of what I've got started. Um, I These are supposed to be sweet peppers. I am battling leaves and branches and all kinds of things. So um, I'm thinking some kind of shade would be, or screening would be nice. Our neighbor is actually amazing. We have an amazing neighborhood and he makes amazing pergolas. 
and for their garden and he is going to make me one for this garden. Um, so that will be super helpful, but I just kind of wrote on each tag the day that I planted it and um, just like how many days to germinate and to harvest. Just so I have an idea, I get these tags at the Dollar Tree. They're I think 10 for a dollar, which is considerably cheaper than anywhere else or $1.25. The dollar 25 tree um so stuff like this is kind of you know i'm, I'm realizing <laughs> is just 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 part of outdoor gardening things that i don't have to think about when gardening inside um this was just some struggling basil that we had in pots that is a fresh basil that we got from the store and then this is a pepper plant a habanero pepper that John got also from the store and I just transplanted in here. So that was pretty easy. I don't have any peppers up yet in the box, but, or is this possibly? I think there are a few peppers coming up actually. Um, I do have some coming up in a pot though that I'm keeping in a little uh, seed starter box. So I kind of didn't know what to expect. So any like extra seeds I kind of put in the seed starter box that I have um, as kind of backup. <laughs> I didn't know what to expect. Anyway, um, this under here is watermelon on this side. Let me just get you guys in there. Watermelon and on the other side is cantaloupe. I have again just kind of divided the two. I'll probably wind up taking that out at some point, but just you know while I'm getting started here um, at least until the plants start to come up uh, it does need to be watered out here so I am going to do that pretty soon and that's pretty much it I just used the fencing is um, I think from the Dollar Tree and this little thing came in super handy I think I got that off of like Timu or something um, and then over here, uh, I don't know how well you guys can see that or not, but it's just, just carrots, which I actually learned does not grow this time of year or uh, is not something you would start this time of year, but I'm just kind of give it a go. We were experiencing quite a bit of wind and uh, some rain, so this came in really handy to kind of protect what I have going on. I had some extra dill that I had started in a pot. I just kind of threw it over there. Um, I have more dill in another place, so I'm just trying to see if I can get it started there and then possibly I will move it. Um, you'll kind of see why as we go along. This is just some sage. I've never had luck with sage, so I'm just going to try that out. Um, this is just a Meyer lemon uh, bush tree that we got last year actually and it just kept struggling and John put it back here in the boxes that were unprepped and as like a last ditch effort he just didn't want to like throw it out and it when we were retelling the boxes he had forgotten all about it and it it's alive so looks like some new growth I'm just gonna leave her be and maybe we'll have a little Meyer lemon someday um and then the these were this is some more sage that I had started again in a pot and um, just kind of wanted to get it in the ground. So I had three rows. We did go out of town, so I wasn't able to water this, as I said, as often as it probably needed. So several of them didn't make it, but I still have five, possibly six decent sized you know, little guys here, and hopefully they will continue growing. Um, something I, I learned last year with growing tomatoes is you really only need one to make it, you know? Um, these are all radishes doing amazing, and I have another pot of them because I had extra seeds. Um, so these are starting to pop up already. I planted most everything on April the 10th, so it's only been five days. Um, beets, nothing yet. This is extra beets because I had extra seed. And with the Roma tomatoes, these these actually came from a tomato <laughs> that John just threw in a pot. Um, and basically these little guys sprouted. All of them seemed to make it uh, while we were gone. So that's good. They will appreciate some water. This is just a little tomato 
I think this might be a volunteer from last year. I learned a lot about gardening last year just by planting some tomato seeds. And I think I planted probably a hundred tomatoes and I only really had one that successfully survived, but it produced enough cherry tomatoes to supply him and I all season and into the winter. So honestly, it's kind of different with indoor gardening. You want everything to thrive. You want everything to live. And so to see something suffer um, or die is kind of hard to acclimate to when it comes to shifting to outdoor gardening because the chances of every seedling making it, it's just not realistic. Um, and it's just kind of something you have to get over. Um, also the thinning process, you know, actually actively taking plants and you know, thinning out the weaker ones is a new concept to me. So these are just some garden beans. They have not sprouted yet. Um, this is again, just that little bit of dill that I had extra. This is the cantaloupe side. Oops. This screen has proven to be super duper helpful in the interim while I'm waiting for the seedlings to kind of get strong enough. So. That, that may be a tip if, you know, if you're new to gardening, uh, also like just keeping these sticks off and out of the bed has been super helpful. John did install this pipe and we have access to water out here, which is nice through the irrigation. Um, and then these are cucumbers and they are cute as can be. Oh my goodness. They're getting their first little like I have had really good luck with these so far. To be honest, I planted them in a pot. They started to sprout when they got two leaves. I put them in here because I know these do have to climb on something. And honestly, I didn't think that they would all make it. So I wasn't really concerned with like how closely they were, sp you know what I mean? Like I thought I would have to thin some out. Turns out they're all doing really, really well. So I'm hoping I'll have to show John these. These look so cute. Oh my goodness. When we left, they were literally pretty much just like this. So in the last two days, they've grown so much. And I did plant these a little earlier. So this was on three, oops, 331. I planted those. So down there, I just have some cilantro um, that I didn't put in this box. All of this cilantro had started basically in that pot. And I, again, I'm, I'm new to this. I just decided that I kind of want to keep it together. And I had already put some seed, cilantro seed down. So I just started like putting the seedlings that had already sprouted in the corner. See, this is fairly damp. So maybe it's actually too wet for these guys. And I'm noticing none of the seeds have sprouted yet either um, on the oregano, which is on this side. This dill plant actually came from my neighbor and I do have some starting down here um, as well. This was the same dill that you saw back in the box. So that's the garden and here is the, what we're calling the orchard, just because we're planting all of these fruit trees pretty much on the property but this is the peach tree she started flowering probably december um which the flowers are stunning and since she has just given us tons and tons and tons of peaches they're everywhere and this is such an easy tree to grow it goes dormant um so you don't have to worry about frost with it which is lovely and then next to her, we have the oldest tree, um, the mango tree. And she has really taken off this year. We had a pretty mild winter. So she's going to give us all kinds of little mangoes. And um, they're just kind of everywhere. This is a Barbados cherry which this has also given us quite a bit of fruit in the time that we've had it. Um, we've probably harvested three times so far off of this tree. This is a variegated lemon. We have two of these. This is the first one that we got. She is just starting to kind of come back around. She's 
struggled quite a bit. I do believe that there is something eating her. Just haven't figured out what it is. Um, so if you know, feel free to let me know. This is a grapefruit that we rescued off clearance, I think at Lowe's. And um, another one that has taken some time to, I think it does have leaf miners. I probably do need to spray everything down with something, but I'm just a little leery because this is all, you know, edible. And then this is a mandarin. So these guys are all kind of coming back from winter. All right, so this is a avocado. She went into total shock um, when we put her in the ground and she's still kind of not through it yet, but she is giving me some new growth. So I'm just gonna try to keep her watered and um, hopefully that will do the trick. Um, this is an apple, Anna apple. Apparently these do well in Florida, I guess, or in warmer climates. So we're gonna give her a go. She was dormant. She's just now starting to kind of wake up. Um, and this is the other variegated lemon. She is also looking hungry for nutrients to me. Um, so I probably need to feed. This is the other avocado. All of these have been put in relatively recently. Um, and we're calling this, like I said, the orchard. Um, yes, this is a pear, hood pear, and we have Florida home pear. This is the other one. They're all babies right now. And then these are two navel oranges that we still have yet to get in the ground. <laughs> But we are pretty proud of it, and we are hoping that eventually we can get everything going and it will start producing. That's the goal. I do have a couple other things, too. We have this olive tree um, that is actually giving us some olives. Don't mind the mess, you guys. Like, there's always something going on around here. I'm, I mean, I'm always working on something. Um, this is another tomato. This, I believe, is from last year. Um, I believe she's from last year. That made it through winter and everything. Little new blueberry. This is our old blueberry. She's going to go in the ground. Um, the blueberries are so good. Mm. So that's that little corner. And then over here, we have another tomato. She's super thirsty. I'm about to water everything. Um, blackberry that's going to go in the ground. I think she'll do much, much better once in the ground. Um, I did plant some pumpkin seeds. I'm going to put her kind of in that same corner. And this is just a little box with some of the seeds that I had started just kind of like as a insurance or backup. So chives are starting to sprout. Um, those are the sweet bell peppers that are in the box that are starting to sprout. The radishes have just gone crazy. I seem to be struggling with the oregano. Um, I don't know. The time in the oregano doesn't seem to want to. Maybe it's too wet in this box. This is one of the flowers from that passion fruit. So beautiful. Hey guys, so... I just got the cabinet up, the Millsbo Tall. This was my anniversary gift, and um, don't mind me, I'm a total mess. And the house is a mess, but um, I'm kind of playing with placement right now and just kind of like where I want to put things. We are going to add more lights. They are in route, um, but I was so desperate to kind of just see how everything was going to look. So I'll kind of show you that. Um, I'll show you the planty corner as it stands because it's probably going to look very different um, once this is over. And yeah, we'll just kind of see, see where this goes. Okay, so this is where I'm at so far. 
You can see that I have just these two bars up for now. Um, I actually had two bars left over from when I did the Mills Bow Wide. So I just saw for today, that way I can kind of see what I'm doing. I would put them in. Um, and yeah, I do have a shelf right here. I think I like this, you know, tall space for some of my larger plants, like maybe some of these guys. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not quite sure yet. That's kind of where I'm at. Just sort of playing around with where I want everything to go. I will say this cabinet was definitely, in my opinion, the hardest to put together. I really struggled with it. Um, the legs are not the same. They are different. Though they look the same, they're just slightly different enough to totally screw you up if you mess up, which is what I did. Um, so I kind of had to take everything apart, the base, and put it back together. Um, what else, you guys? There was just like a few things that I found really challenging. Oh, getting the glass in. Like, you have to get the glass in just perfectly or it will not align right, um, which was super duper frustrating. Anyway, um, so yeah, I'm just going to continue on putting things together. I think I'm going to use the hutch in the back again. I haven't been using that um, for like my propagations and just kind of things that maybe don't fit in the Millsbow tall. And yeah, that's, that's what we're doing. So yeah, I guess as I'm putting stuff back, I'll kind of show you periodically what I have and what's going in. And then maybe when I get it all set up, we'll do a Millsbow tall tour. I think that would be fun. I do want to do a tour of everything. I just, I don't know. I, I've been really enjoying the sort of genus series where I've been going through my collection genus by genus. Um, and yeah, I think you guys enjoy that too. Anyway, uh, this is my little variegated watermelon peperomia. And I know it's kind of hard to see her. Um, but this is just a little pot that I made out of air dry clay. I just took an Ikea pot and just wrapped it in air dry clay. I made the little feet and arms. This pot is actually sold, um, the, the real one, um, from Modern Aqua. Super duper cute. I did have it on a swing, but I have no way to sw like keep her on her swing now. So I think I'm just gonna set her in there. Um, but if you want to buy, this is just like my spin of theirs. If you want to buy the actual original variation, Modern Aqua is where you'll find it. I know this top shelf is gonna, I feel like it's gonna wind up being kind of full just because I really don't want to add a, I also have to weather strip still. I don't want to have to add another shelf. I just, I don't know. I, I like it a little more streamlined. And I've been secretly watching Wild Fern while doing this. And I've also been watering because my plants are definitely thirsty. I pretty much have it timed out where my plants need, they need water pretty much every like seven days. Um, especially with the other cabinet, the Verena cabinet that I had because it just sucks up so much moisture, but Kind of hoping <laughs> that I can avoid doing that. That was a variegated domesticum. My little Sampy, our boxer, chewed him to smithereens. So this is a Zara self that is not doing so well, obviously. It was, it was, it was doing great. And then I repotted it and now it's not doing so hot. So I'm probably gonna have to rehab her. Um, although, no, I, I maybe speak too soon here because I do see a little leaf. You're not gonna be able to see it, guys. But there is a sign of growth. So maybe when I potted her into this larger vessel, because she gave me this beautiful leaf, 
Um, maybe she just freaked out in the transition to her larger pot, but she also really needed it, so. I'm also unsure of how much weight these shelves can hold, and a lot of my stuff is in semi-hydro, so that is a little bit concerning. I don't know, guys. All right, guys. This is where we are stopping for the day. I was able to get a couple fans in, which I think this is plenty. Um, I haven't weather stripped it yet, so we're at 58% with, you know, absolutely zero weather stripping. And I do only have two of the Barina bars in. John did order me some of those. So I think I'm going to have six up here total. And that should illuminate pretty well. Worst case scenario, I'll try to figure out a way to add some down the front. Um, like the front line, but I'm thinking that should be good. I did move some things around and yeah, that's where we are. That's where we are at the moment and I will keep you guys posted. My next video will more than likely be my philodendrons. Um, I've been planning that one out, but it just hasn't come to fruition yet. So I'm gonna work on it and that's it for this time. I'll see you guys in the next one. Don't forget to subscribe, bye. <laughs>